I grew up in a multilingual country that was kind of held together by images. The main way in which the independence movement in India began in the 19th century was by creating an image of Mother India, literally, that didn't exist before. So images are read and matter a lot. As a middle-class Indian kid, my career choices were pretty limited. It was medicine, engineering, or business. And I looked at how long it took to do these things, and I realized business was the shortest one, it was the quickest route out of home, so I did business. And so my excuse to go to New York was to uh, do an MBA. I'd never been in a city like that, where there were 50 art galleries, photo galleries, with prints on the wall, and major museums like MoMA and the Met, who had permanent photo collections up all the time. And I got, I got completely uh, caught up in this other world. I stopped going to my classes, and I enrolled in the new school in photography classes. But I had a natural subject, this gay subject. And again, I hadn't seen anything like it, this very public display of gay men, like hundreds of them. You just stood on the corner, and like they were coming by every second. And I was interested in those guys, and I took pictures of them. And so that gay identity and the migrant part, that became my subject then and now. It's unwaveringly been the subject. It became a kind of mission of mine to make photographic images of Indian gay men in India uh, for many reasons, to prove to myself there were other gay men like me, to prove to everybody else there was such a creature for the Indians as well as the people here, and also to try to put that into art history so that uh, what happened to me wouldn't happen again, because as an art student, I had no references. And I called it Exiles because I felt uh, if you were gay and Indian at the time, you were either in exile like me, because like, I certainly couldn't live there. This was in 8, 19, in the early 80s. Or you were living there and you were completely silenced. You couldn't say anything. You, you can do documentary. You can hide behind a bush and jump out and take a picture. But then you'd be kind of exposing all these people who were really trying to hide, actually. So I met a bunch of people. I explained what I was doing. So I got a cast of characters. Uh, they told me what was happening. I created visuals of this in my head, and then we went to the places and made those pictures up. But what was key for me is that the places were real, and the people were really gay men. So. Like some other peers of mine, I got involved with this constructed documentary thing. So that became a style of working, perform trust and relationships, and in an ongoing way. That's been important to me. So much of the work kind of originates in my kind of lived experiences. So 10 years on, for example, came out of a failing relationship that I was involved with. I wanted to figure out why, and I couldn't, and then I thought meeting similar people who were making a go of it might have some kind of answer. So I went out again to use the photography to, as an excuse to meet the people. But what happened to them is retrospect over time is that these are the people who in England got hit the highest early AIDS cases in the 80s. And half of those people aren't with us now, so it's become a kind of memorializing. I was diagnosed in the middle of the 90s as HIV positive. And then I thought, photography can be healing, you know, the process can be healing. And by then I'd been doing digital like six, eight years. And I made a very important physiological discovery that doing digital ain't healing. You could sit there and you get a very big headache and your back hurts and all of that. And you can hardly walk after and it just wrecks you. But doing dark rooms is magic. That's healing. So I went back to film and back to the darkroom and made another body of work, which was about the illness also. So, you know, yeah, it was a very transformative and healing process. I think it's important for people to hear that other people feel able to say they're HIV positive in, in a public way.
This is why I like street photography. I love that you can walk around the streets and you find these juxtapositions. This was the entrance to a quite a heavy duty sex club. And right next to it was this poster. I do think photography is a fantastic democratic medium. Something like 80 million people in India have a mobile phone and take snaps with it and upload them to each other. I shoot with anything these days. Anything goes from iPhone, whatever's handy. You know, so because it's not the camera, it's the what's coming out the other end.